and um, we today we we will see we will keep going with the network chapter uh, which is very interesting and we if we have time we see some examples uh, how to make um, a network with uh, real data or data taken from uh, a different source so uh, Federico, before you start, can I have one minute? I, I came across a, a resource that I really, really liked this week that helped with the with the simple features discussion. So I just wanted to share that with the group. Ah, that's right. Yes, sure. Should I go ahead? Sure. So, um, so la last week during our discussion, or I think really for me, it comes with any anything that I'm learning new. Uh, I try to get down to the building blocks and foundations of it, and I just could not find any good resources that really showed me the building blocks of this of the simple features concepts until I came across this uh, this set of videos by a user named Joshua French. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. I hope everybody can see it okay. Um, User's name is Joshua French, and he has some. He has these videos. They're 10, 15, maybe uh, minutes long, not long, but he covers everything about overview of simple features, spatial data points, R packages for working with them, simple feature geometry objects, and um, this. These videos were so incredibly helpful to me for understanding the the real basics of of the uh, of the uh, concepts um let's see if i go over back over here to video number two hopefully we don't have to watch an ad we might um, <laughs> Happy day. Moment. The easiest, accurate way. Okay. what a great ad that was. Future object. <laughs> um so what he what he does is he 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 walks you through creating these things manually and they're very, very simple versions of the different geometries. It's even possible to see it, but um, the resolution is so bad. But uh, there's, he talks about creating, for instance, like a, a point geometry, and then um, he goes in and then you manually create uh, lines and polygons and then multi polygons. Ah. And, and so it's, I guess it's hard to see right here. No, there it's coming in, it's coming in more clear right now. But as an example, right, he sets up, he sets up just a simple X, Y point, one, two, and uses this, this command ST underscore point to turn, to turn these two numbers into like an actual geographic object, like we're talking about. And then you can see that it comes out as, as a point object. Uh -huh. um, he adds an additional dimension, so now it's point one, two, three with the z-axis, and then plots those two. Um, and then as the as the video goes on, um, you end up you, know, you end up plotting just the single point. But he does the same for as you can see, he gets started here, and the same for um, for creating polygons. And if I advance it a little bit, you, you work out a way to create this polygon which is a square with two holes in it, you, you create that entirely from scratch. Uh, and so anyway, this was very, very easy for me to understand and to, under, to really get the basics of it. So I thought I would share that with the group and I'll put the link into the Slack as well. But again, the user's name was Joshua French. So check it out. Thank you very much. I, I was looking for that thing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Shall we start? Did, did you put in the in the chat? Did you put the link in the chat? Uh, I'm working on it. I'll, I'll have it, and then I'll also put it into the Slack channel as well. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I think we uh, we should start. Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, I didn't interrupt when I came in, you were talking. So yeah, I think 
um, maybe I can just quickly do welcome back everyone. And yeah, I guess uh, let's continue with chapter seven, Patrika. Go ahead. All right. Let's share the screen. Okay. Uh, everyone can see my slides. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay, so um, let's uh, um, continue with this, uh, with the chapter, uh, just uh, recap a bit about the, uh, how uh, do we visualize uh, a network of data. Uh, so instead of using, so you can use ggplot2, okay, um, this is for sure, but there is a package which is specialized for making graphs. Uh, and uh, uh, this is ggGraph. Okay, um, ggGraph uses the, the same um, syntax of uh, ggplot2, and uh, you have uh, uh, instead of ggplot2, you, ha you have ggGraph, and then some geom function to build up the layers of your graph. Um, to uh, just as the same as w when you make a chart with a ggplot2, you you set up a layout. You can add features uh, as well as, as I said, layers. Um, the the most important thing is um, let's say that you need to have a sort of uh, uh, idea of what, what your graph uh, is going to be and have the data uh, settled ready uh, on, on a certain way uh, to, to be able to, to be used inside ggGraph. Um, we have seen in the previous session uh, how the, the structure of a, a network data is and how it's made and everything. But, uh, we will be more clear if we see, go through a practical example. Um, we have already like um, been through this data set. This is um, the high school data set from ggGraph package. And uh, this is a very simple uh, uh, data set that will be transformed in a graph with this function as table graph. Um, once the, the data set has been transformed as a graph, as we have seen it um, in the previous session, uh, you can use the geoms from ggGraph to uh, set up your network. Um, there are different geoms. Uh, Obviously, the, the ages are the, the lines and the node points are the, the, the dots that connect the, the lines. Um, as an example, um, the, this is the iSchool graph uh, data set that we have just um, activated, not activated, but modified. And now uh, with uh, the use of tidy graph, and this is um, a very useful package, which provides uh, a different function. Um, we can activate the ages. Uh, then he had some extra features to um, change them, uh, like with different colors. So we need to activate that, that part of the graph to be able to um, make mm, modifications so as um, as we like um okay i uh, these are uh, some other examples uh, for example you can uh, create a, lay a layout um, and this means uh, the layout is the shape of your graph and there is different layouts available uh, with a single uh, uh, function uh, separated from the the, the ggGraph um, 
and then you just basically set the layout inside your um, your data set and you can use this function create layout and set the layout um, as you can see previously we did um, no, no not previously uh, so you can do this with a function outside or inside uh, the ggGraph. This, for example, is a DRL um, uh, layout, which is force directed graph layout. Uh, some information can be found uh, in the links. Then when I push the, the notes, everything will be uh, found. I can eventually uh, put something in the chat. So uh, the, the package that we have used um, until now are ggGraph and tidygraph, but there's many other packages that uh, have been settled for making networks of data. One, uh, another package very useful is iGraph, it's quite common uh, to use. And uh, with iGraph, you uh, can set uh, different layouts for example, this one is KK, as it's Kamada Kawe, I don't say the pronunciation. Uh, but this way, um, for example, um, I've um, taken again the high school uh, data set and then with iGraph made a graph from data frame which is a different function from before, the one I've, we have just seen. Then again, create layout, and then uh, the, the same syntax for making the, 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 the graph. Um, and then you, in this case, don't need to activate, but just apply a factor, uh, a color factor, to be able to see uh, different colors. Um, maybe it will be more clear uh, later when we see it in practice. Uh, here is a, um, instead a very simple example of making a graph with I graph with nothing. So you set the ages, uh, specify the numbers of um, uh, links, uh, and then you see if directed or indirected. Uh, um, so this, this is a very simple one, so you see, um, you set all the ages, you set, you set the ages, and then with graph function, the inside of this uh, G1, uh, which is the graph that uh, has been obtained, is this. Um, as you can see, you can use the function E that we have mentioned at the beginning of the, the chapter, EG1 for, for this graph, and you see that uh, it shows you the ages, as you have asked, it's, uh, 1 to 2 and 2 to 3, etc. With VG1, you, the, so V the graph, you find the vertex, uh, and with G1 and uh, the, the, this uh, square brackets, you see what is the matrix, how it is. And this is nice when you make modifications and you see uh, um, how to use this, uh, these functions. Very simple one. Okay, so there's many shapes that your graph can take, but one nice one, uh, for example, is... Uh, um, make something something which is circular and uh, they can be linear of course but and circular so we use in this case called polar to to obtain this um, this layout or we can use circular true inside the ggGraph and then called fixed You can use a uh, different layout like a dendrogram, and then uh, again the edge link, chord polar, and then scale reverse, and you obtain all these things. 
Um, I've made a few of these, uh, and uh, that would be quite interesting to understand how. Uh, so, so when you accept your layout and, and the, the the shape of your graph, that the connection are what you want, because they they you, you may use different layouts and they make connection that are different from what you expect. You might expect so. Um, then uh, we have seen ages, so like the, the links, the lines and the links within the information that you provide. Then there's points, the, they are the, the nodes of your graph. So the geom for, for making nodes are this one here, points, tiles and everything. For example, this is um, a nice graph that we have used before is a look graph and the one that uh, has been made from the colors uh, so it's um, basically a four uh, variable um, data set with uh, l u v and so the, the different uh, um, values of of the colors and then the four va uh, variable is the name of the color uh, and with this um, with this data set um, if you uh, do these things like this is a, the basic layout provided by ggGraph you ask for geom age then geom node point and then um, you can actually obtain like a sort of uh, uh, tree, which is quite nice to see. Uh, and then uh, in this case, the color are not uh, uh, available uh, because uh, um, there is no, um, uh, they're not available because they're not, uh, the points are not, uh, uh, showing up this visualization okay so the 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 the, 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 the other one is a tree map and uh, this is uh, made with the mm, geom node tile and uh, the fill is depth because it's uh, it's from the the data set uh, so I think it's uh, nice to see this on, in practice. Uh, just to end up with this theory, uh, these are other uh, geoms to be used and as the same as with ggplot, you just need to have a bit of practice finding the, the things and trying different geoms. Um, and uh, one more nice thing to say is the shape of the data frame. This is a function provided by Tidygraph that we have seen at the beginning of the, uh, the, the chapter. And this is uh, for making uh, um, artificial graph. Okay, this is the, the, the structure, the syntax for, for making it. But this way, with this class of graph, uh, which is a, um, um, an eye graph, but it's a, a data frame graph as well. You can, uh, it, provide, it, it is provided with node class variable, and um, you can use uh, the colors in a way that they are like um, um, showing a gradient uh, uh, appearance. Then uh, um, more, more features uh, within the geoms that are interesting are these ones, like geom age fun and uh, geom age parallel, which is, this is very nice if you need to see if they are uh, somehow, the information that you provide somehow parallel. This is a, um, a dendogram, which is as well a network of data. And uh, it's uh, obtained with a layout dendrogram, and you need to provide some eight because otherwise uh, it doesn't show how it is. 
and um, as well as before there's some um, some other little things that you can add like arrows and um, uh, decide where to start with start cup and end cup and then uh, you can even represent a graph with dots with mm, with GMH points, uh, the connection with uh, this thing. Uh, everything can be uh, as, as within ggplot, uh, use it with facet, edges, for example, and so you can have a, a different representation with, of two uh, variables that, that would be useful and as well make them in two relations. Okay, so this is almost uh, everything. And uh, if now go here, I'd like to show you uh, some um, things like informations. So there's many other packages uh, that you uh, might want to try, uh, like Dendogram, uh, Dendextend, uh, it depends on what, what you want to represent. Uh, the data set that we, are talk we were talking about is this one, like uh, Data High School. Uh, if we see, this is a very simple one. Uh, this is from two and the year colon. When we uh, apply um, um, so we want to make a, an, a network, we need to transform this data frame in a way that can be used inside a ggGraph. So um, this, this function is from, from tidygraph as table graph. And um, the inside of this, um, uh, so the structure, uh, it, it it's, um, changes. Okay, so you still have your data frame here from two year, etc. But it adds information for for the function to understand for ggGraph to understand how to uh, relay with with this information. So, for example, if I use a circle pack uh, layout with this uh, simple um, information. Where is it? Okay, I obtain something like this. Okay, which is making in relation things um, in circularity, and they uh, I, I didn't spend much time adding information, but we're just trying to understand how it works, and then we see. Uh, something more um, or uh, more clear okay so we can say that uh, definitely years have been treated uh, separately from uh, each other and they are linked somehow within the information provided then there is this uh, loop graph um, which is this and this is uh, as I said um, le let's see if we can uh, if I can show you this is nice uh, this was uh, in the beginning of the okay this is the 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 data set, okay, and this is the way he uh, has been made before then being settled inside the package, then you can assess, now you can uh, access it, assess it like this without making it, but it has been made like this. And it is made by L, U and V um, numbers that are the gradation for making this color white, blue, uh, turquoise, antique, so all the colors available. And then if you like representing uh, 
visualizing, you see that the, the, this is um, uh, a representation of the, the different colors. But when we modify this uh, Louvre uh, colors and we're making um, in a way that uh, um, it can be used as a, uh, as a graph, so we do as a table graph, so we, we need to make first a cluster of the distance of the different information, difference information. And then as a table graph, this is the, the structure that we obtain. And uh, we have uh, no more the, the, the four variables that we had at the beginning. It's completely changed. And then we can use it, for example, as a datogram using ggGraph with a, a geom uh, age and a chord polar to obtain something like this. Doesn't throw up. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is with chord polar you obtain this, this um, it's, a, it's a sort of like uh, the bars, um, a geom bar, the one you make uh, a chord polar, but it's slightly different because it contains different informations and um, the structure is completely different. And then there is a um, still um, um, different representation of this, and it changes completely just with here we have used geom age elbow and here geom age link then if i change this like um i don't want to do this okay and i set this other option like circular true and chord fix it. Okay, this is slightly different. As you see, um, you may uh, need to think about what is your um, need to, and what do you want to show um, and tell in the story. Um, uh, one more example is this one, uh, which I have made uh, um, some time ago. And uh, this is uh, with Gigi Network. And this is a, a, another package that hasn't been mentioned. Uh, and uh, I've tried putting inside uh, one of the uh, data set that we have used in the, in the chapter, but he doesn't accept it because uh, he, this function here, GG Network, um, likes just a certain type of data set. So um, the data set I, I've used is this one here and it's an iGraph class of dataset. And uh, it is the same that we have uh, um, used in the, um, uh, I've made a modification uh, in the chapter that um, I didn't show, but we can see it now. Okay, so from the high school graph uh, data set made from high school, no? I've made another, a different uh, um, data set using this function, graph from data frame. And this is from iGraph instead of tidy graph. Uh, with tidy graph, uh, we, we did use it um, as table graph. Instead, with iGraph, we use graph from data, ta data table. And uh, the, um, the class of the, the data set is different. So as you see, this one is iGraph. It's exactly the same as the one I, um, I've just shown. 
uh, and uh, so I've tried to put this one here inside the GG network. But uh, um, as I have asked for coordinates, uh, this is uh, still something that I need to to check. Um, so it doesn't uh, is mm, doesn't accept it basically. Even if I do this, so but. Uh, with my with my um my data set but if you see the, the class of the two data set are exactly the same if i look at this and this other and uh, no, sorry this one here so this is an eye graph and this is an eye graph so must be one of the options that i've settled here um that didn't let the thing work. Okay, maybe this one, this one. better now. I want to see this. Okay. What is up? Okay. So this is. Um, <laughs> A graph made with high school information and mixed with my other information that uh, I had here, like this one here, this data transformation that I put here. So the, as you see, the the class of the of the data set is very important and uh, um, as long as you understand which is the um, the the class to be used that uh, everything uh, will be much easier so going back to my uh, my thing uh, this is a um, um, data set that i've used for making this uh, uh, this graph. Now you see it's a bit more crowded, okay? And uh, to to obtain this um, this I graph set to use, um, it has been a, uh, done a bit of work, and I have uh, uh, used information from uh, um, a website uh, which made this as a task for students and uh, which is this and to do the, this thing you need to like um, uh, have very clear uh, that uh, uh, for example the distance between the information is very important so there's many uh, function provided uh, within, for example, iGraph that lets you um, uh, transform the data in a way that uh, uh, you can um, obtain um, a data set of information uh, ready, uh, available to put inside ggGraph. So this uh, um, is a bit complicated now to to go through i don't know if you want to but i have another one to show you which is um a tang tangram and uh, this is nice and uh, i have used uh, dend extend which is an another of the packages um, mentioned in the book and uh, as well as i said uh, the the work is behind <laughs> so you need to have the the, the data uh, settled ready for for putting inside uh, the function to 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 give the the, the graph alive so this is a, a, a tidy tuesday data set from the bird bats 
And what I've done is a bit of tidy things, uh, and then uh, um, this is just tidy things. Uh, so, and then I've, I've made a little model to cut away some information, like I've just split the things uh, to obtain a, um, a little chunk of information. And then uh, of this information, have made a little table, which is this. Uh, where is it? Which is this? Uh huh. I, sh I should have uh, uh, already run everything, <clears throat> but we can do it again. Quit this. Uh, the, the suggestion uh, is to uh, search on the internet for, for the things that you want to make and uh, use all the resources available and try to build your vi visualization uh, on something that has already been made mm -hmm. and then practice uh, a bit more as much as possible then finally to make your uh, special one. So this is the te uh, test set that I finally <laughs> uh, completely uh, simplified. And uh, you, you, you see, this has, is my test set. So this is my bird, um, bird bat numeric because I, I've transform all everything in a dummy variables and uh, once you have dummy variables to make a network of data is very simple because uh, the, the what uh, the information does what, what the function wants is to search for 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 the link for the the the, the next the, the 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 link to to connect so if you give numbers it's uh, like simpler to um, to to establish this uh, hierarchy of connections so um, then to do a uh, this nice uh, then the extend the feature which is uh, um, uh, um, a tangle gram a tangagram, what is it? It's uh, making in connection to information and uh, like you have two dendograms and you want to compare them and see like, like I don't know, if you want to see what how a uh, thing changes within two years or two different years or different periods or I don't know and see you can you have to you build up two dendrograms and then you connect the dots uh, to see how they change it um, within these two um, for example two years if you compare years so for for doing this thing you need to make two dendrograms and this is the first one it's a very uh, classic and simple one and it's a dendrogram with two branches and 42 for example in this case members total with this eight and the eight is even a, a, an important variable um, because it lets you see the dendrogram in a certain way that you can uh, um, it's depend by the number of information that you provide if they many uh, they can be like all uh, attached to each other so you don't see anything so the eight is very important so you you make these two dendrograms and uh, this is like a sort of uh, simple uh, tidy things but the scale function is very important because you transform the information in a way that are all scaled and um, 
so still more easy to to find information and then you consider the distance with the, you have different methods that you can use uh, you can try different methods i've tried this that worked well for me and then uh, having this done uh, Having this done, you make the H class. Okay, this is the like sort of the matrix. Then you make the the H class, and you are able to obtain uh, an H class method, Manhattan number of object, uh, and finally a dendrogram. Okay, so what do you do now? Is to uh, with this function, then the list, you list the two dendrogram inside, and then here is the big thing. You can put like features, you set the labels, set the characters, set the colors, set the branches. Even here I've put nice uh, feature which, are the, which is the, the branches colors. Once you did that, you put your result, so this the, the your then the list inside the tandelgram. Okay, all these things here are options. The so you, like the titles uh, or all the other things that if you don't do that, you don't obtain the same thing. So where is it? It takes um, uh, maybe a little while. Okay, so this is nice. Um, this is nice visualization, but still has some problems because as you can see, the numbers here, if I go 90, 94 here and I go back there, this is um, uh, not 94. So they not, mm, so this is uh, his language. So they are the same. So this is correct. But the numbers are, are different. So when I attempt to add uh, the uh, when I attempt to add the, the labels, uh, it's come up with a problem. So well, that's okay. So this is one, two, three, and um, what else uh, I did try? I try to. I don't know if you have some some questions. If any of you had some experience doing these things if we i don't know want to any questions have you got any questions Federica's ryan i just had a quick question about the resources needed to present uh this type of media this this uh more vectorized or, or graphical form is this gpu intensive or is it cpu intensive with processing all the the uh, various uh, data points as it paints to the screen. I, when you when you render this particular plot, uh, plot this bird's bath uh, survey, it seemed to pause for a while. Do you believe that yeah. that's due to the GPU or or is that more CPU intensive? And anybody's oh, welcome to question. answer that. Yeah. <laughs> good question. Okay, so. I'm not sure about that. Mm, not sure about that. I have to. I have to believe it's more GPU centric. So your your data frame, as it's ingesting and processing all these different nodes, uh, connection points, edges, etc. I think it's rendering is is really the the harder part of processing this or compiling it. Um, mm -hmm. These are really intense graphs. I guess uh, there's a lot of activity that's going on with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, there's more information that uh, we uh, can look at, like, um, let's see if I can move this away. Uh, so ggGraph package uh, provides, diff um, here um, there is uh, the imagining, imaginist, uh, that imaginist, which is um, a nice resource and uh, find you with uh, um, some uh, other additions like uh, you can see that there's a different type of layout 
it's like ggplot you know um you can use layout with inside the ggraph brackets or uh choose uh, to add uh, an, an additive method adding uh, for example layout uh, table graph auto or and change the thing so that quite lots of uh, features that can be used um, also um, one more interesting um, uh, resource that I found is uh, which is this uh, came across this thing network across the scale which uh, goes through the book um, more or less but uh, uh, shows you different things how you can combine things differently and this is um, um as well nice and even this data imaginist.com um as you can see there's a uh, the use of different uh, uh, layout and the things that is nice is show you uh, how for example um, this is a, a layout uh, so it's a data that has been obtained uh, with the function that I've shown before, create layout. So this is your graph data that you already made uh, with the function table uh, graph. And um, you create layout and obtain this, this new information, which is here. And then you can see it that at least that has to be the X and Y colon and some other information for, for him to connect the dots. Then there are other functions like attributes and uh, this is nice, for example. This is um, obtained with the linear lay layout but uh, the graph, so the information that you provide need to be of a certain type, otherwise it doesn't show up like this. So the, uh, actually the information need to somehow you have a, a, a visualization of this information before to apply um, on a graph because um, uh, it, you think it's possible, but it's not. So. Uh, the, the, the tidy of the data is the, the most important part for, for making this, these networks. Then finally, this is nice as well, I found this, but this is not related with ggplot. This is related with uh, a plot, uh, classical pl um, a plot function. And, but uh, here I found some, some information uh, which I didn't expect it, like the if uh, and the use of the e uh, function here and the v function to see inside your um, uh, graph uh, data. Uh, but you see, you can see the vertex. Uh, you can see the ages with this func with the use of these functions, but then he plotted it with a classical plot. But they are quite nice. They are quite nice as well. Federico, <clears throat> Federico can you include this resource in the uh, in the chat? In the, sure. I guess in the Slack. In the, sure. The I, Slack I, yeah, I stop sharing uh, in, in case someone else wants to. I don't know, maybe share some other uh, example. Have you got any examples that you have done, perhaps, uh, making networks of data? I don't have any examples, but I love the, <clears throat> the concept of creating these networks on top of a geographic map. So, um, so I, I'm going to dig into that. Yeah, I, I show you, um, I put in the chat the resource where I, I found the, um, I listed like uh, a list of um, what is it? 
if it is better like this and uh, this is uh, for example this i graph r package uh, it provides as well for for python the use for python and there's a lot of information inside this is just for the layout uh, and then uh, these are the classical information that you find in the book as well and the ggraph and then I'll, I'll put the the one uh, where is it maybe it's here uh, uh. this is the thundergram uh, no no is this one here so these are the resources that I've used uh, this is a quite complicated thing but well, it's not complicated mm, not complicated but this is Stanford and uh, this uh, um, you have uh, the information um, that so they, they show you how to, to do how to do it Um, and then um, I have used it. Okay, I have used uh, some uh, like th this nice uh, resource, which is very nice. Where inside you can find this. I think this is a student. Um, inside you can find uh, different uh, uh, data to use uh, to make a graph. Uh, with uh, as you can see. Uh, there's many data available, like I've used uh, this with countries, uh, where is it? This 2009 country, our data, this can be seen because it's quite large, no, it's downloaded, but it's here because um, it's uh, is this one here okay so you have all the the countries and then uh, mm, there, there are some uh, extra functions because they, they are not being mentioned in the in the book but in the tutorial for making this graph um, and this for example is for the, the one that is related with the I, I graph is graph agency and uh, this function is basically very important for in this in this case for example because I have uh, these informations and uh, what I do with graph agency is basically ordering the vertex in a way uh, that can be used. In fact, this is what is uh, transforming it as a high graph to be used. And then uh, set the, the connection following the vertex names. So, yeah. so Rick, I, have a, I have a question for the group. Um, <clears throat> in, the, in the chat, Sri Ram mentioned the SF Networks package, and I just looked that up really quick, and it mentions that it is, um, well, I'm sorry, it mentions uh, being like a tidy, a, a tidy package. And then there's also the package called tidy graph. And I'm just curious about like what makes it tidy? What, what's, how does it utilize like, how does it utilize tidy concepts that aren't present in, in a different package? Okay, the tidy. It's like the SF uh, networks is, it's called a tidy geospatial networks in R. 
and then the separate one is called tidy graph and i just am trying to understand the tidy part of that this this is the um this is the tidy graph uh, yeah. and uh, where is the the one that you said i i don't find in the chat um, yeah it's 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 just called sf networks it was one that was posted in the chat <clears throat> So I guess a similar question or the, the inverse is what's untidy about any of the other packages we've been talking about? I don't know. Is, uh, is this one here? Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, so it inherits the table graph class from the tidy graph package. So the, the table graph class is the, the one that we have uh, uh, used to transform a data frame into a graph. Mm. So I think is uh, this is an, an, uh, another package, SF network. Okay. It's okay, um, we can, we can continue the, I can look into it a little bit more, or we can continue it. Mm, he uses plot, not ggplot, but he, 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 um, uh, obviously a bit of practice uh, that would be useful. Okay. Okay. No, that's good. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take us over time, so. Right. Ryan, I see that the tidy graph says it lets you use dplyr and tidy tidy verse workflows on your data. So oh. I think that's what makes it tidy. You can use mutate and filter and things like that to uh, to work with the, the graph data. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So, um, is anyone um, have other questions? Oh, thank you. I don't know if I have been helpful somehow, but um, not. Um, they 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 are quite uh, interesting thing to do. And um, but you need to have a visualization of the what what you want to achieve, and then you need to understand what are the connections. So the very simple data that would be uh, easier to to represent, and then uh, more complex things uh, that can be like uh, not very understandable. If you don't put X information, like a, a, a simple H class thing, um, the dist function and the H class thing um, are very important as well. Thank you, Federica. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so it's all for me. <laughs> okay, we'll see you next time. Uh, yeah. It looks like we're meeting next week. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.